So I hadn't planned on uploading a video today, but after what I've seen, I think we should. What is up everybody, it is Fox at PlayStation News Now. Check the bottom right of your screen, go follow me on Twitter, keep up to date with regular sorts of news, rumor, video game discussion, and the Gamer Couch podcast this coming Sunday. In today's video, I think we're gonna have a little fun. But first, let's do some news. So, Sony Interactive Entertainment has announced that Uncharted 4 A Thief's End has sold through 8.7 million copies worldwide that is phenomenal and i'm sure naughty dog are very happy once again it does reinforce the need for exclusives on a platform to make a console stand out and of course the sales speak for themselves now obviously i'm not saying that every exclusive does these type of numbers but i think it helps shift a few playstation 4s don't you think that exclusivity nathan drake only available on ps4 yeah i think so and also, Sony announced that they have sold through 6.2 million PlayStation 4 units throughout the 2016 holiday season. The PS4 has now sold 53.4 million units worldwide to consumers. Very impressive. Very impressive indeed. Now, in the same period last year, Sony had sold 5.7 million PS4s, so clearly that is up by a substantial amount. During Sony's press conference from CES in Las Vegas, Chief Executive Officer Kazal Harai provided more color about the performance of the PlayStation business. After mentioning the news sales milestone just announced via press release, Harai San stressed that PS4's momentum is, and I quote, very strong even in its fourth year since launch end of quote he also went on to talk about playstation vr describing it as a great start for the headset and announcing a new vr experience created by sony music entertainment in collaboration with popular electronic musician kaigo here's a quote and though it's not included in the numbers, PlayStation VR launched last October and gave us a great start also through the holiday season as well. So with PlayStation VR, we're able to provide you dramatic, transformational new gaming experiences and our ambitions for VR aren't limited to just gaming. Sony is well positioned to take a one Sony approach to set trends in virtual reality across our content divisions, enhancing how you experience movies, music, television and more. Here, for example, Sony Music Entertainment developed a VR music experience with electronic musician Kaigo, and you can experience it all at the Sony booth if you are lucky enough to be in CES Dark Cloud 1983. And for those in the US that are not there, rest assured it will be available on the PlayStation Store starting today. So with the phenomenal PS4 exclusive Uncharted 4 sales numbers and exclusive PlayStation VR content, I guess exclusivity really still does bring a lot to the table. Now a lot of people claim that exclusives are somehow less important than they used to be, somehow irrelevant and uh, that uh, multi-plats really are the key selling point of any console really playing down exclusives to some degree. Now. The only people who really propagate that exclusives no longer matter or are somehow less important than they used to be, well, they really claim this because they play on a console that no longer has exclusives. Go figure. Anyway, moving on to some very brief news. Mass Effect Andromeda will be launching in North America on Tuesday, March 21st this year and beginning Thursday, March 23rd in Europe. As usual is the case, the UK and largely Europe gets the game just a day or two after North America. Mass Effect Andromeda will run at 1080p and 900p on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One respectively, and Xbox Scorpio development kits have not yet shipped, so Team Andromeda will not know whether the Scorpio will get an enhanced version as the PS4 Pro will. Keep your eyes on this one as I'm sure there's a lot more to learn about Mass Effect Andromeda. 
and Firewatch has sold 1 million copies with 54% coming from the PC platform. Now Firewatch is not a game for everybody's taste, even though I believe it has fantastic narrative, a great story, many people claim it's just another walking simulator, which is far from the truth. Um, it's a very engaging game and you actually care about the character that you control. Now with 54% coming from the PC platform, 54% of sales, clearly this is very much in the PC territory and as a console gamer and not a PC gamer I'm extremely grateful that these type of games come from the PC onto console so that we may experience something a little bit less usual than the norm. Also Nintendo Switch is rumoured, heavily rumoured to be released on March 10th in Europe. Big question mark over this one, you really need to take it with a pinch of salt. Nintendo Switch, a hybrid portable home console, well this console really has not had a lot of hype surrounding it apart from Nintendo fans taking to social media. However, we are very much looking forward to another console entering the fray as it only can strengthen the entire games industry, along with Xbox Scorpio of course, two major console releases in 2017, a lot to get excited about for fans of gaming everywhere. And let's stick with Project Scorpio for the time being, as courtesy of ThisGenGaming.com, who have gone to great lengths and detail to uh, create an article in why they believe Project Scorpio is going to outsell the PS4 Pro. Not that it matters. I mean, if the Xbox Scorpio does outsell the PS4 Pro, isn't that good? Isn't it good that any product is really selling very well? However, on to the article, which I will read verbatim. Microsoft in particular is looking forward to this year, declaring 2017 the year of Scorpio. While Microsoft did release another console last year in the Xbox One S, it was more of a half step upgrade to the Xbox One. Not really a half step, only a marginal improvement if you're asking me. Anyway, back to the article. Rather than a full step up as the PS4 Pro is for the PS4. No, that was not a full step up to the PS4. That was actually a half step up. Um, clearly a lot of research done in this article. However, moving on, the PS4 Pro has made its debut and has been out for a while now. Actually, not a while. It only came out in uh, September. That's not a huge amount of time. And offers only true viable 4K gaming experience aside from PC gaming, that is. Um, okay, if you want to call it that. Xbox One S can double in HDR technology and has a 4K Blu-ray player which is surprisingly missing from the PS4 Pro and it cannot achieve true 4K gaming. Microsoft is looking to wrong that right with Project Scorpio. Now, while sales of the Xbox One has increased since its sluggish start, it's no secret that the sales still pale in comparison to the PS4, which had a very, very strong start. Perhaps Microsoft is looking to take advantage of Sony rushing to be first to offer a fully fledged 4K VR compatible gaming console. Rumoured that Project Scorpio boasts better technology than its Sony counterpart, which is indeed a good sign for Microsoft. While they are keeping a few specifications about the processor hush hush, we do know that it's an 8 core CPU. What we do know for a fact though is that the GPU for Project Scorpio will have a definitive edge over PS4 Pro, provided it can be optimized properly. Project Scorpio has a 6 T-flop GPU as opposed to Sony's 4.2 T-flops. Again, provided optimization goes well, Project Scorpio gets the nod here. Microsoft is also boasting that it will be VR ready and more capable than its competitor despite Microsoft downplaying VR, which is my point of view, not the articles, but back to the article. Rumour is that Project Scorpio will somehow partner with Oculus to achieve this and if all holds true, then Microsoft is able to offer a newer, more powerful machine that would supposedly perform better in areas where the PS4 Pro was marketed to be best at. One final piece, if information that uh, is really somewhat news is the price point. There has been a couple of rumors flying around that the console will have an MSRP price of $399. The PS4 Pro launched at this price as well and eventually by the time Project Scorpio is released it will no doubt see price drops. Now there's a lot of grammatical and uh, punctuation and um, 
well, there's a lot of errors in this article, so do forgive me if some of it doesn't make sense. Um, now, launching at the same price as a PS4 Pro, which came out, gives Microsoft the advantage is to say that its consumers will be getting a more powerful machine for the same price as its competitors' less powerful unit. Plus, launching with a holiday season and no doubt the bundles that will come with it, Microsoft will be able to push more consoles out and hopefully close the gap, if not overtake titles of total units sold from Sony. <laughs> That's a tall ask. Overtake. Yeah, they, they might be able to close the gap, but overtake. I doubt that. Highly doubt that. But anyway, all in all, regardless of what the system is actually launching with, it is able to introduce new and more powerful technology into the console market and offer a smooth, easy to use and fun gaming experience, no matter with the back and forth going on between Microsoft and Sony in terms of the competition. Okay, there's a lot of problems I have with this article. And, uh, you know, mostly I can't agree with some of it where they actually say easy to use, smooth and yeah, fun gaming experience. Yeah, I'll give them that, but not easy to use. I mean, a lot of people complained about the Xbox One's UI. And if it's going to really be identical to the Xbox One um, in terms of the UI, I can't see them changing that drastically as they want the whole family of uh, Xbox One units to really converge so it's going to be the same UI so if you find it easy to use now then yeah great but if you don't then it's not easy to use for everybody is it um, another issue I have with the article is the overtaking of sales I mean I'm not sure how the Xbox Scorpio is going to be able to achieve this for Microsoft um, we wish them well of course we wish them well but um, yeah we wish them well finally I was trawling through YouTube and we're moving on now I was trawling through YouTube and to my surprise I found and watched two videos dedicated to PlayStation News Now basically calling me out over the video I made uh, a few weeks ago why the PC Master Race Elite want consoles to fail you can go check it out on the channel if you haven't watched it already very surreal very very surreal I'm used to watching others get called out I never thought I'd be watching myself get called out especially by somebody I've never heard of never heard of the funny thing is nobody in my circles none of my followers none of my subscribers nobody in my circles as far as I'm uh, aware nobody in my circles made me aware of this video's existence perhaps nobody watched it I don't rightly know <laughs> but uh, of course I disagree with the video for the most part at least I mean these people watch one maybe two videos that they strongly disagree with and then they claim they know who you are what you think and what you stand for uh, the individual in question conveniently mislead his own viewers in this video that uh, where he's critiquing um, my video um, claiming that I had spoken in broader terms. I had made blanket statements about PC gamers, which just isn't the case, just isn't true. I made it clear in a video I was specifically referring to a certain mindset of PC gamer, the master uh, race elitist gamer, even though it's a meme, it's a joke, we all know there are people that carry this, this thought process around with them uh, for various reasons of insecurity, but we won't go into that again. Go watch that video if you want to know more. But uh, I wasn't referring to all PC gamers is the point in case. But then I guess if people told the truth, uh, when their videos wouldn't be as half as entertaining really, would they? Sadly. But uh, you know me, even though most of the criticism about me was wrong and uh, my thought sentiments were woefully misconstrued, one of the videos, uh, not the Scottish bloke, the other guy, but yeah, I found the video was actually very well put together, uh, very cartoony, uh, very entertaining. Uh, so much so that I actually hit the like button. It's never good to take one's self too seriously and everyone is open to criticism. Anyway, that's all folks. That, my gamer friends, brings us to the end of another video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share content on this channel. Go check out Dark Cloud 1983 for all that CES 2017 goodness. And uh, remember, play games, not corporations. Thanks for watching everybody.